Summer's here. Finally, we get some sun. It's nice and hot. I feel good. And if you haven't heard, I've just been awarded Microsoft Most Valuable Professional, which is the MVP award. Really hard to get hold of, but I feel very blessed to get it. So without further ado, let's get into the next episode of Moment Days and dive into the latest updates on Teams Rooms. Let's go. Hey, everyone. And welcome to another in this week's episode, I am going to be running you through some of the big updates that are upcoming for Microsoft Teams Rooms. Um, in the April edition of uh, kind of the updates, um, there's a whole range of updates that Microsoft uh, are now bringing to both Microsoft Teams Rooms and Windows and Microsoft Teams Rooms and Android. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. Okay, big, big updates for April. Now, this was published on the Tech Community blog at the end of April, so you could theoretically say it's it's a kind of May update. Um, but yeah, let's, let's dive straight in, and I'll try and keep this as short as possible because there are a lot of updates. So um, starting off here at the top, requiring meeting ID and passcode to join a Teams Rooms for both Microsoft Teams Rooms and Android and Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows with a Pro license. You know, a lot of these new features require Pro licenses. So as long as you've got Pro license, you now have that require a meeting ID and passcode. A lot of customers over the years uh, wanted to have some element of security, especially for those uh, meeting rooms that have the one touch join. They didn't want random people just walking into a room that is not really their meeting and just joining into a meeting. So this way now you it re requires that passcode across there. So an element of security, that's great. I absolutely love it. Next one down, 4K display support for Teams Rooms on Windows. Um, this is a one that's been needed for quite a while. For a number of years now, um, commercial displays have pretty much all been 4K displays. Natively, Teams Rooms on Windows never supported 4K. It was only 1080 support officially. Um, in order to get around it, we had to like um, edit X Skype XML files and add a whole bunch of different lines onto it in order for you to get the scaling to be right, especially since Front Row came out and we had 21 by 9 displays. And, and things like that as well. Um, so this is a big one. Now natively, um, 4K display is supported on Teams Rooms and Windows. So if you are using Front Row or using 4K screens or 21 by 9s or whatever it may be, now there's no need for you to edit any Skype XML file. So um, that's a big one. I love that one. That's really good. Next one's a big one. Uh, new Teams Rooms available or Teams Rooms app is available on Teams Rooms on Windows. So uh, if you've been living under a rock the last few months, you probably noticed that Teams on your desktop now gives you the option to try out the new Teams if you're not trying it already. That new Teams is actually running new architecture. The code has been built from the ground up because the old version of Teams, as good as it was, um, wasn't quite optimized for today's standards. So it used to suck up a whole bunch of memory. Uh, the new Teams Rooms short short name is like Teams 2.0. Uh, if you're using Teams desktop, the new version, it actually uses way less memory, less processor, and it frees up a lot of the resources and it even saves you battery uh, on your laptop. That same architecture is now moving on to Teams Rooms on Windows. So your app, your Windows Teams Rooms app will now be updated to that Teams Rooms 2.0, if you want to call it that, which is based on the new architecture. That means you will get better performance and you'll save yourself 50% uh, more memory. Um, this is really good because if you think of how old Teams Rooms um, is now, so Teams Rooms has probably been around the last four or five years, uh, and congratulations, Microsoft, we've hit that one millionth room, which is uh, an amazing achievement. Uh, a lot of the earlier rooms that came out way, way before uh, are running a lot older hardware, right? So i5 processors or, you know, different generations of processors, uh, and some of them are starting to struggle with some of the new features that Microsoft is pushing out uh, on Teams Rooms. Now with the new app, you're going to be able to run them because those older machines uh, will, will will have 50% more resources being allocated um, or, or, or not used anymore. So that's a, that's a plus point. Keynote across here, you will not see no changes on the GUI. So at first glance, when you look at the GUI, the front of room, the touch console, it will look exactly the same and it's meant to do that. It's only backend changes. So the architecture that builds the actual app itself, that's what changes. So you will not see any difference, um, um, but it's really good news to see Microsoft has been updating, which means we get faster development, better updates and, uh, and, and less processor and memory usage uh, on older devices. Okay, what we got next? Change language in Teams Rooms and Windows. Again, another one for Windows. Um, this is really good for those customers that have deployed Teams Rooms um, on countries with 
across the borders or, or European countries that have many, many other countries surrounding them, countries that have dual languages, etc., or, 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 or triple languages, if that's a word, that, 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 that happens a lot. Now there's no need for you to actually go into settings, uh, put admin credentials in there to change languages. You don't need to do that anymore. An IT administrator can, can configure up to three different languages uh, on the machine, which now means if you are a user and let's say you speak French um, and the, the, the console is showing everything in English, you're able to hit the more button or the three dots, click on languages and then select French from a list of three different uh, languages that your IT administrator would have assigned on there. So that's a really, really good welcome change. All right, um, home screen refresh for Teams Rooms on Android. Um, people are always worried about feature parity um, or you know the differences between Android and Windows. And a couple of years ago, Ilya Buchstein, um, during ISC, during one of the fireside chats that we 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 did, you know that question was asked about feature parity between Windows and and an Android. And he made a promise back then, saying, "Hey, we're on this path to actually um, create feature parity." So there's there's always going to be slight differences. Um, just based around Windows architecture and, and power on those machines versus Android. Um, but in terms of what everybody does most often inside of meeting rooms, um, you're going to be able to do it from, from both. And it's really good to see he's been true to his word. Um, now, Teams Rooms on Android will look exactly the same as Teams Rooms on Windows. Previously on Android, it only showed you like the calendar, for example, only showed you like the meetings you had set up for today. Now, just like Windows, it will show you available uh, time slots, so free time slots, uh, and it'll even move into like tomorrow as well, depending on how many meetings you've got set up across there. Uh, so now it will look identical to Teams Rooms on Windows. No excuses now. You can deploy Teams Rooms on Android and Teams Rooms on Windows within the same estate, and customers will not get confused on uh, over them. Um, okay, another update. Give feedback for Teams Rooms on Android. Okay, on Teams Rooms and Android device, the help button will include a give feedback option. That's a simple one, right? If you want to give feedback, you've got any feature requests, you're running into any issues, you simply just hit the help button. Uh, it'll say give feedback to Microsoft. It can allow Microsoft to contact you uh, and attach logs, um, you know, to assist as well. Uh, number one rule is if you ever run into issues, always attach logs. Um, so that's nice to see Microsoft have applied that little toggle on off button to to attach the, the log straight away. Um, okay, 4K quality local HDMI content sharing for Teams Rooms on Android. If you are using a Android device with a 4K screen and you are sharing content, now the sharing content inside of the room, so locally shared content will be displayed in 4K, providing you've got 4K content. Um, what it won't do is it won't stream 4K, right? The world's not ready for 4K just yet in the Teams Rooms world. There's probably not enough bandwidth for most organizations to handle 4K calls. So streaming over Teams, calls, video, etc., that still won't be 4K. They'll just follow the same rules as we have today. But if you are in a room with a 4K screen and you plug into your laptop and you share content inside of that room, everything will be displayed in 4K. Uh, so that's really good, especially when you're presenting things like Excel documents with little cells and numbers and stuff in there. Uh, now at least you're going to be able to read them, right? So and um, that's a really, really good thing that we can do. Uh, automatic device updates via Teams Rooms Pro Management, the last one on this page. So th this actually is quite a big one. You know, many kind of uh, MTR installers, one of the biggest complaints they have is sometimes how long it can take uh, out of date MTR. So so if you've had an MTR sitting on a shelf for a long, long time, and then you go to de deploy it into a customer environment, it can take days for the software to catch up because of the maintenance windows and the, the way you're supposed to do the updates. And I've covered it in previous videos. Microsoft's making that so much more easier now. So providing you've got a pro license, providing you are using the uh, Windows app as well, now, uh, during the initial setup of the device, the Teams Rooms and Windows app will automatically check and install new application and Windows updates. So no getting confused of what part should you update first. Ensuring devices are protected and up to date on day one. So super, super easy, super simple uh, installs on there as well. Going back to that feedback thing we spoke about uh, on Android uh, earlier on. Now, user reported events in Teams Rooms Pro Management. So, so those user reported uh, events now have their own reports page 
uh, within the Teams Rooms Pro Management Portal. Um, so if you've if you've got customers or partners or whoever that have raised feedback, uh, you'll now see a list of it, and you'll you, you'll be able to actually see uh, the feedback on there as well. Makes it a lot easier for you to go and manage and escalate um, if, if there's any issues. Uh, second one down: bring your own device. BYOD meeting room admin experience. This is big. I love this. Right. Previously in the past, BYOD Microsoft wouldn't even talk about it, right? Because they didn't really play in that space. But now they've embraced it because there's a need for it in the world and actually bought a place uh, inside of the Pro Management Portal for BYOD management. Um, so if you have devices that are BYOD devices, when the fifth person connects to it, it basically flags a Pro Management server and says, hey, I'm a PolySync 40 device in a BYOD room. Uh, I'm now part of your inventory list and where would you like me? Would you like me to be assigned to a room and then you as an IT administrator can assign a room, a BYOD room. And if you want to go one step further, assign a shared device license to actually gain insights. Um, maybe I'll do a video on exactly what that's all about. If you would like to know more about that BYOD thing, please do comment down below. If you comment down below, um, th then uh, I will absolutely do a video that talks about what that experience looks like. Okay, Room Remote in Teams desktop app available for GCC. If you have customers on that GCC environment, previously in the past, you were not able to use Room Remote. Room Remote, you ask, what is that? Um, if you are using uh, Teams Rooms and you've got your laptop or even your mobile phone, and while that meeting's running, you dial into that meeting using your laptop or using your mobile phone, you have the option to use something called a Room Remote. And I've done a video on this in the, in the past as well. What the room remote allows you to do is it allows you to control like the basic experiences of that room, like a touch console. So it will let you put the volume up and down and mute and, you know, share and that sort of stuff. It will allow you to do that. If you are on a GCC tenant, you weren't able to use that. But now you are with the restriction that it's the Teams desktop app, not your mobile phone yet, but the Teams desktop app will allow room remote in there as well. Uh, so that's really, really good. Uh, and last but not least, so this is the last update I'm going to talk about. It's actually quite a big one for years and years. As long as I can remember, everybody has spoken about, hey, when is Microsoft ever going to bring uh, remote access uh, onto Microsoft Teams rooms? And, you know, it took a while. It took a while for Microsoft, I'll be honest with you. So many OEMs out there created their own. So Crestron did it on their XIO cloud platform. Neat have recently just done it. HP Poly are about to do it as well. You know, and many others out there allow you to use their own management software and actually remote access into a machine to configure, maintain, control, whatever you want, allows you to do that. Now you are, you've actually got native support within the Pro Management Portal as well. So a couple of prereqs that are required. It has to be Teams Rooms on Windows. It has to be Windows 11. So not Windows 10, but Windows 11. That's just down to the security aspect of it. Um, you also have to create a role base. Uh, so a role with role based access control. So who can actually have access to do that and what can they do? Um, those are kind of the, the main ones. In fact, on this channel, Michelle Bauman uh, has actually created a video a couple of weeks back that shows and talks about how you would set up remote access on the Teams rooms uh, on, 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 on Windows and the Pro Management Portal as well. I have dropped a link here on the slide for you, but it is on this channel. Uh, have a quick search, type in remote access for Teams rooms on Windows, and you will find uh, Michelle Bauman actually talking you through step by step, including um, what you need to do in the Pro Management Server uh, in order for you to be able to set this up. This is uh, very, very good. I hear you ask, when is it coming for Android? I've heard it's on the roadmap, so it should be coming. But as soon as I know, I will definitely let you know. With that in mind, I think this video has gone on long enough. I want to get out there. I want to enjoy the sun. Make sure to like, subscribe, and do comment down below. And no doubt, I shall see you guys next week.